My friends, many politicians in Washington want the United States to go to war. However, in this case, it wouldn't be against China or Russia. And it's now time for America to wage war on the cartels. Yes, we're going to use lethal force. Yes, we reserve the right to operate. I would use the U.S. military, if necessary, to annihilate the Mexican drug cartels. They're talking about the U.S. warships imposing a naval blockade on cartel-owned ports. Dozens of daily drone and missile strikes on cartel assets. The deployment of special forces to eliminate cartel leaders and, if necessary, prepare the U.S. Army for a full-on invasion of Mexico. It would be like using a hammer to get rid of a headache. Thanks to Supremacy1914 for sponsoring this video. Supremacy1914 is a free online PvP strategy game. Personally, I really like the fact that it is set during World War I. Pick any nation you want and avoid fighting wars on multiple fronts. Make sure to bring your friends to form alliances so they can protect your flanks on land, air and sea. From up to 500 real-time players per map. Let's see what friends you can really trust. Remember to stack up your infantry and to develop your tech tree with over 120 different units ranging from cavalry, tanks and aviation. Ultimately, victory on the battlefield will depend on the strategy that you will come up with. Try out Supremacy 1914 now for free. Click on the link in the description to get 15,000 gold plus one month of premium subscription for free. Offer only available for 30 days, so don't lose time. The entire idea of military operations against the cartels dates back a couple of years, but really took root when members of the Small Scorpions cartel fired at an American white minivan they mistook for rivals. In the end, two out of four Americans in that vehicle lost their lives. The Wall Street Journal wrote, Republicans new border plan send military into Mexico. That's because representatives Dan Crenshaw and Mike Waltz introduced a new bill. This is the official document from the United States Congress. The word cartel was mentioned 21 times and would legitimize the use of US military assets against the cartels right into Mexico. And the most shocking about all this is that according to the Washington Post, Declaring war on Mexican cartels is popular. They're citing a poll where 55% of all voters and 86% of Republicans would be in favor of deploying the U.S. military across the border in Mexico. Meanwhile, Senator Graham also introduced the Ending the Narcos Act of 2023 that aims to label cartels as TRST groups. Now, the main reason often brought up for this military intervention, the casus belli, is that Mexican-produced fentanyl is thought to cause the death of between 80,000 and 100,000 Americans a year. Then there's an increasing number of bolder and bolder cartel incursions into U.S. territory. On the 8th of August, a group of cartel gunmen armed with rifles and body armor were seen on cameras crossing illegally into Texas, near the city of Fronton. As a matter of fact, it was reported that these armed members of the cartels are the ones escorting the migrants across the border. It's been a known fact for a while, but now we have visual evidence. The New York Times now claims that the cartels are the ones smuggling migrants across the U.S.-Mexico border. They write that this is now an industry worth billions of dollars. Cartels have increased their involvement in migrant smuggling over the past decade, transforming the operation into a multi-billion dollar enterprise. And if migrants are expelled from the US back towards Mexico, they're immediately caught by the awaiting cartels and are sometimes back on their way towards the US border in the matter of hours. NBC News reported that in the fiscal year of 2022, there were 2.76 million entries of migrants into the U.S. through the Mexican border. Cartels even organized a journey of the migrants up to the border with planes and buses for a sum of roughly $10,000 per person. And lastly, in the past 20 years, Mexican cartels have also massively expanded throughout the United States. And in this one, a 2020 map from the DEA showing what cities are under control of various Mexican cartels in the United States. It is believed that they now maintain a presence in over 1,000 cities. And this is where many in Washington want to launch their own special military operation. Not a war, 
just a special military operation. The first thing that is often brought up by politicians to fight the cartels was to carry out missile and drone strikes against their drug labs as well as on leaders of the major cartels like the Cartel de Sinaloa, which was founded by El Chapo. The US has all the satellites and aerial reconnaissance tools necessary for such operations. The DEA and US intelligence know Mexico like their backyard. They have many informants and they know exactly what's going on on the ground. From a technical perspective, there's nothing stopping the US to carry out such strikes. The US Air Force has 300 to 400 MQ-9 Reapers that can each fire up to 16 AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, equivalent to the payload capacity of an Apache helicopter. The Reaper's long endurance allows it to loiter over a specific area for an extended period. The Reaper's long endurance allows it to loiter over a specific area for an extended period, providing continuous surveillance of potential targets like safe houses and supply routes. The Reaper's advanced sensors, including high-resolution cameras in synthetic aperture radar, enable it to identify and track individuals and vehicles of interest. As you can see, this drone is perfect for missions against cartels in Mexico. The US Air Force could also make use of its F-35. For example, in 2019, the US carried 7,000 airstrikes in Afghanistan. They could unleash the same payload on the cartels. One problem is that from all its air bases, the US Air Force would have trouble engaging targets on the southern part of Mexico, although this could be solved with the support of the US Navy and their aircraft carriers. On top of that, the National Interest reported that an upgrade will let Reapers fly out from aircraft carriers. So by positioning one aircraft carrier in the Gulf of Mexico and another along the Pacific coast would allow a full coverage of Mexican territory. Of course, we could develop the technicalities of US military strike capabilities, but let's talk in a practical way. Reality is, every time a lab would be destroyed, another five will pop up. All right, here's a game. Try to spot the fentanyl lab. All right, take a guess, aim, and shoot. Quickly enough, the cartels will simply relocate their labs into urban areas. Places filled with civilians. For example, malls, hospitals, churches, schools. And then it's checkmate. The US Air Force can't do anything. The other option would be to simultaneously carry out strikes against cartel leadership, like what was done against various TRST organizations across the Middle East. Thing is, if you strike one cartel leader, eventually you'll have five new targets. How about I pull out my massive map that I showed you last time? The once powerful Gulf cartel has fractured in Mexico's northern state of Tamaulipas, with different splinter groups jockeying for position in key cities. The more splinter groups, the more violence, the more chaos, the more civilian casualties. So if the generals of the US military think they can achieve success just by using aerial means, then in that case, they have learned nothing from the past 25 years. This is the wet dream of American warfare. Destroy the enemy solely using the Air Force. They didn't work during the Vietnam War and still doesn't work today. What you have to know is that the Sinaloa cartel is considered to be the wealthiest, most stable and decentralized organization. They can survive the loss of key leadership figures, but not necessarily the others. So chances are this US missile strike campaign might actually strengthen the Sinaloa cartel by getting rid of all their rivals. The US will necessarily need boots on the ground. Now another talking point about these politicians would be to send in these special forces. Seems like they watch too many Hollywood movies and end up believing their own propaganda. Now, let's say the US decides to unleash on the Sinaloa cartel. We're talking airstrikes, drone strikes, spec ops. US intelligence could even cooperate with rival cartels and use their informants to destroy the Sinaloa cartel. Now, once the Sinaloa cartel has been seriously crippled, who do you think will fill the void? The rivals of the Sinaloa cartel, like the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion, which is already a growing military powerhouse in Mexico. So unless they ally with a cartel to fight off the other ones, which by the way, politically speaking, is not possible, the US military would have to engage all the cartels 
simultaneously and it will be total chaos in Mexico. It's almost mission impossible and the sharp increase in violence which will result from this chaos will push the Mexican government to react. How long is Mexico going to tolerate these aerial incursions into its territory? The next option would be a full-on special military operation to fully cripple cartel endeavors. The US will need to take physical control of all ports of entry of narcotics into Mexico, especially Manzanillo and Lazaro Cardenas, from where fentanyl precursors arrive from China, as well as the main logistic hubs of this trade. The former president of the United States, Donald Trump, now famous for his mugshot, said that he could send 250,000 US troops across the border. I mean, maybe this is gonna drive recruitment rates up because right now a lot of people in the US Army would not be thrilled for this. Oh my god, what? You mean I actually have to go to war? Shooting guns make my ears ring and it's gonna scrape off my nail polish. No, let's talk numbers. An expeditionary force of 250,000 would be 33% more than the total number of troops present during the surge in Iraq in 2007. At least it's next door. So from a logistics perspective, it shouldn't be that complicated. I'm just thinking, if 170,000 coalition troops had trouble maintaining order in Iraq, what is it going to be like in Mexico? A country with three times more inhabitants, and that is four and a half times bigger than Iraq. Using the same ratio as in Iraq, the US military would need to deploy 765,000 troops to fully cover Mexico and they would face hundreds of well-equipped formations of guerrillas that are now becoming expert in the use of IEDs and grenade dropping drones. Cartel operated drones dropped 33 bombs. We also have to factor in geography. Mexico is a highly mountainous country coupled with lots of major urban areas. The metropolitan area of Mexico City alone has over 20 million inhabitants. But I'm sure a couple Navy SEAL teams and Batman together could make the streets of Mexico City safe. The special military operation in Mexico, the SMOM, would be like the fusion of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. While cranking up the difficulty by four levels, that alone presents it as such a bad idea. It reminds me so much of what the US government expected with the Pancho Villa expedition and most likely it's gonna end the same way. With US forces going home, having failed to capture the guerrilla leaders they wanted. Check out what Mexican newspaper El Economista wrote. It is delusional to think that the North Americans will be able to achieve with an expeditionary force what the Mexican government has not achieved by deploying 600,000 elements in the last 15 years. Okay, bro, I understand. But US military commanders won't change sides for a $10,000 bribe. We know the Mexican army could destroy the cartels tomorrow if they wanted. But the problem is their leaders. There are countless of corruption scandals of high-ranking Mexican military officials in the pockets of various cartels. Or how some army commanders sold entire batches of weapons to the cartels. The cartels know that a US military intervention would mean the end. Of business for them. So we can believe that a lot of money was spent in the recent month in the Mexican media. However, in a way, El Economista has a point. To succeed in this mission, the US military has no other choice but to act with the support of the Mexican army and local security forces. Just from a military perspective, to have full physical presence all over the country and not simply be stranded in bases like in the Middle East, but to actually go out into the country, build numerous checkpoints, search for narcotic shipments in ports and warehouses, patrol both cities and the countryside at all times, and still retain enough forces to chase down cartel gunmen in La Sierra. The White House will need the full cooperation of the Mexican government, which they absolutely don't. Mexican President Obrador has rejected calls for the United States military to intervene. No, vamos we are not going to permit any foreign government to intervene in our territory, much less that a foreign government's armed forces intervene. I mean, in that case, Mexico would suffer from an illegal and unprovoked invasion. 
And now many American politicians say that the Mexican government is working hand in hand with the cartels to prevent such a special military operation. But what they seem to forget is that in Mexico, the sight of United States army columns marching into their country is a taboo topic. There is still a lot of resentment among the Mexican population about the loss of Texas, the follow-up Mexican-American war, when American troops ended up storming the capital Mexico City and annexed 55% of Mexico's landmass, and a couple decades later, in 1914, when the US occupied the port town of Veracruz, followed by the Pencho Villa expedition of 1916. So like they did in the past, the White House could push for a military intervention without the consentment of the Mexican government. The United States used this threat because they know their invasion force would be largely unopposed. For example, Mexico has zero air defense capabilities. They seem to have very little artillery and most of their vehicles are actually lightly armored personal carriers. So let's say US Army columns go into Mexico, establish bases and start hunting down the cartels. What if some battalions of the Mexican army try to stop these US columns from operating? Is the US going to fire at them saying they're colluding with the cartels? And thus essentially not only declare war on the cartels, but on the people of Mexico? Or are US army columns going to retreat back into the US just like they did during the Pancho Villa expedition when Mexican army units started converging on the American expeditionary force. The only realistic solution is for the Mexican president to call for a joint US-Mexico military operation against the cartels. One force the US military could rely on is La Marina, the 30,000 men of Mexico's naval infantry. They are considered to be the most loyal to the government. They are famous for the elimination of Kingpin Arturo Beltran Leiva from Los Zetas in 2009, when 200 naval infantry rappelled from helicopters right into his mansion, which coincidence was located just a couple blocks away from a Mexican army headquarters. They are also the ones that finalized the capture of El Chapo Guzman in 2016. And this would allow the Americans to achieve something very similar to what they achieved in Colombia in the 1990s. Remember that Supremacy 1914 is a free online PvP strategy game set during World War I. Choose your own strategy and engage in epic battles. Click on the link in the description and get 15,000 gold plus one month of premium subscription for free. Offer only available for 30 days, so don't lose time.